right, so I'm probably gonna probably um I'm probably gonna do three more for reaction videos and now I'm off. Somehow there's quite nothing else for me to do, but I decided I was gonna do something very new of course, so yeah. But this time we're also gonna react to the the twenty best of PlayStation five games. And it's by Mojo Play. Now, in case you ever know this, I did, you know, I haven't, like, played PlayStation 5 for over quite some time because my, um, my thing, one of my things expired, but I'll try to get back to it if I can, because, um, I need to get the, the pre, the premium one, so, yeah. But, I did have so much experience for me, for, for me to play, um, why would I play on, on one of the games on PlayStation 5? Like, um, like the God, God of War Ragnarok that I just played for the first time, of course. And, um, what else? Uh, oh, I play Spider Man 2 as well. Um, I play on a lot of things because, um, it has so much experience of it, and even though I would, I would try it out, try it and like get more games that have so much experience of it. That's how you know that um, that's how you know that you only want to play it on PlayStation Five instead on for the other games that you actually play was Xbox Series X and probably Nintendo Switch as well, or Steam. I totally forgot the um. I've been like try out on Steam for quite some time, but I'll, yeah. But anyway, so uh, let's just uh, check it out. Make sure to check. Okay, it's recording. Like it, of course. But um, yeah. Let me know. Comment down below. What is your favorite PS5 games? I know there's a lot, but um, yeah. <laughs> But anyways, uh, let's check it out in 5, 4, 3, 2. Wow. Just look at oh, it all. Final Fantasy it's so Seven green. Reapers. Even after everything we've done to it, it's still going strong. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today yeah, we're looking at two. 20 best PlayStation oh, sorry, 5 divers. games that are well worth your time and attention. In light of your unique situation, Legacy, joining us as a fifth year, we've devised something extraordinary to ensure your success. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Marvel's Spider-Man 2. Oh, like I said. Elegantly swinging from success to success, Insomniac's Spider-Man games just keep on getting better with each new release taking everything that made the original 2018 game and Miles Morales so special, namely terrific storytelling, in-depth character arcs, and pure fun escapism. Story-wise, we get to see Peter Parker and Miles Morales sharing the screen as they seek to stop the relentless Kraven the Hunter as he and his goons stalk New York City. Adding to that is the Venom symbiote and the narrative arc of Harry Osborn. This is my best friend, Harry. Hey, <coughs> good to you. The intertwining relationships makes for a captivating experience all throughout the game's runtime. Plus, Spider-Man 2 might just be the most fun platinum trophy to work towards and obtain. True. I didn't know there were bears in these woods. Final Fantasy 7 re I'm so glad I actually play um Spider-Man 2, man. I have so much good experience about it because um South and my brother Fred um let me yo. Know, uh, buy the game for me, of course, and I gotta say, um, let's just say that, um, yeah, because, um, even though I always a huge fan of Spider Man, it's always a great experience to see it. I haven't played the first one that I totally forgot, but the only thing is, Spider Man 2 has, has a very great storyline than the the first one of course you know you just feel like you're watching the movie of course you know instead of that because that's how i actually does that i actually i did like plenty of size uh i actually did like plenty of size quests of it because um 
I mean, it, it, I mean, it, I um, sorry, it, it actually helps me uh, level up some more of it. And the only reason why, because it actually like does make sense to it. So, yeah, that's how. That's why I actually did that because um, don't um. I mean, I just don't understand why there's so many hate from, like, uh, other people that always hate on Spider-Man 2. And, I mean, just because it's, like, maybe a storyline or a character or some, Because, um, I mean, I just hope they're not taking too much personal and not too much deep of seeing, you know, not playing Spider-Man 2 a bit. Just because, you know... And may have something to do with, like, um, I don't know, some L LGBTQ parts of it, you know, for the side quests of it. And that's the only thing of it, so I don't know why, but, um, it's just, it's just a bunch of haters that always does this shit every single time, like, always, only like, deal with, like, nonsense, some, some, uh, I don't know, but, um, yeah. Rebirth. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I have well, not now, played it. I think we woke it up. For many Final Fantasy fans, the thought of topping the greatness of Final Fantasy VII Remake seemed almost impossible. Then Rebirth came along and upped the ante even more, making it one of the best in the entirety of the series' history. As you might imagine, Rebirth picks up where Remake left off, with Cloud and company exploring the planet as they seek to stop Shinra's continued exploitation while working to stop Sephiroth for good. Well, hopefully. Sephiroth was in Midgard. We fought him. Whatever happened, he's alive. But why come back now? While open world games might seem a dime oh. a dozen, Rebirth instead focused on highly that. explorable That's open zones funny. where you are drawn to every nook and cranny organically. And when you do get into the throes of combat, you are greeted to some high-octane, in-your-face, action-packed battles, where elements of strategy and tactics can still come into play. Rebirth knows how to keep you hooked moment after moment. If for some reason you have already fully wrapped up Remake and Rebirth, then it's also worth checking out Final Fantasy XVI, since that's a highly commendable entry as well. The hell we're talking. If they won't give us a say, we'll decide our fates another way. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. And I'm here to save you again. What can be said about Baldur's Gate 3 that hasn't already been Never summed up before? It, this titanic, nuanced, and thought-provoking, player-agency-driven RPG might just be the pinnacle of gameplay but variety and storytelling prowess from Larian Studios, who definitely know a thing or two that about crafting in-depth gaming experiences. One of the central reasons this game has truly become one of the best on PS5 is because it allows you to play and interact with its world and characters in every conceivable way. If you can think of a way forward, no matter how bonkers, the game likely lets you do just that. This nature stems from the game's thoroughly incorporated Dungeons & Dragons elements, from non-linear story beats, central characters possibly being killed off, the ubiquity of dice rolls, and other things that are like that, basically. Baldur's Gate 3 really allows you to create and shape your own story with your very own avatar, and for these reasons alone, it deserves to be lauded. The world and its denizens will react in kind. Rogue emotions have taken over Riley's mind. She requires more sophisticated emotions than all of you. You just aren't what she needs. Shaped by each and every decision. You brought us this far. So how shall we proceed? Hogwarts Legacy. Oh, I have a rare she? ability to see whispers of ancient magic. Forgot about that. The sheer idea of existing in a fully realized Harry Potter universe truly felt like a pipe dream for most fans, that is, until Hogwarts Legacy released. The attention to detail that went into creating Hogwarts Castle, Hogsmeade, and the surrounding world captivated budding witch and wizard students immediately, with those feelings persisting all throughout this media experience. Creating your very own witch or wizard and guiding them through the perils of being a new fifth year student at the renowned Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry is simply sublime. From the intricacies of the game's quests to the meticulously designed nature of the world, Hogwarts Legacy is the epitome of magical greatness. 
And that's not even mentioning the frenetic spell-based combat, flying around the open world on your broom, exploring locales from the Harry Potter series, and managing your very own very room fun. of requirement. Simply put, Hogwarts Legacy is a must-play game on PS5. We leave our legacy in your hands. I'll play that. I'm gonna I'm see what I can. Elden Ring. If you take the punishing brutality of the Soulsborne formula and throw them into a bubbling cauldron with an expansive open world, plenty of player agency, near endless hidden areas, and a bevy of unique weapons, well, you, of course, get the behemoth that is Elden Ring. Where many other Soulsborne games push you in a semi-linear fashion, Elden Ring instead lets you take a new direction, venture off elsewhere to just try and forge ahead. It's exactly this type of player freedom that gives Elden Ring its endless I mean, sense of playability, even play with its it? steep difficulty. The fact that From Software took this I'm duality gonna, and made it work seamlessly in I'm a lovingly see. crafted open world is downright commendable. Add in a nuanced and thought-provoking environmental story and world partly created by George R.R. R. Martin, and you get a game that is ready to pull you in and not let you go anytime soon. Helldivers 2. In this time Helldivers of need, two. Super Earth once again calls upon her mightiest, bravest, most obedient heroes. The Helldivers. Helldivers 2 truly came out of nowhere and has achieved incredible success. It's really no surprise, seeing as developers Oof, Arrowhead Game Studios have managed to nail the very often despised live service formula. It's a deeply fun and engaging solo or co-op sci-fi shooter with intense battles, tongue-in-cheek humor, oodles upon oodles of content, and so much more. If fun factor alone was the only parameter for a game's success, then Helldivers 2 would definitely take the cake here. The sense of joy that comes I'm from teaming that. up with some buddies, fun. or heck, even some strangers online, is palpable to say the least. I'm with my sure, brother. they might grief you with an uber powerful weapon or a stratagem, but it will at least provide a good laugh or two as you get ready to hop back into the bug slash alien shooting goodness. Alan Wake 2. Ah, Alan Wake? with a typewriter. I forgot about that game. Someone's been watching us. Now, it would be easy to quantify Alan Wake 2 as just another third-person survival horror game. However, to do so would be a great disservice to the experience. Per Remedy's pedigree, Alan Wake 2 is a surreal nightmare. The juxtaposition of film-like live-action scenes and gameplay is something that Remedy consistently engages with. Alan Wake, one of my all-time favorite writers, and this on the show. He's here to talk about his latest book. In the case of Alan Wake 2, these blended elements ensure the horror-thriller experience as a whole is more than the sum of its parts, ensuring it appeals to fans of the first game as well as fresh faces to the series. This game thrusts you into the shoes of both Alan Wake and newcomer Saga Anderson. Both characters lend themselves well to their respective parts of the game, namely the Dark Place, in Alan's case, and the quote-unquote real world of Saga's. The tug and war of both characters is experienced as they go through this nightmare unfolding in front of them is captivating and thrilling, <laughs> and will ensure you are on the edge of your seat throughout the entirety of this unique horror game. Did you write these pages? Mr. Wade. I'm trying to remember it. You are the killer. The cult bleeding. No! Oh! You got the wrong man! Cyberpunk 2077. Ah, I forgot about that death. It is death that has cheated you. Okay, at this point, it's no surprise to say that Cyberpunk 2077 launched in a disastrous state, but thanks to a crazy amount of elbow grease, the game has finally lived up to the promised hype. Taking place in Night City, Cyberpunk 2077 offers up a power fantasy unlike anything else, with all of the gritty, grimy goodness you would expect from a seedy world such as this. First and foremost, this is an action RPG, one that allows you to craft your own cybernetically enhanced avatar to take on the goons and baddies of Night City. Around every corner of this world, there's something to do and interact with, most of which pushes the narrative along nicely, keeping you immersed throughout. Add to that the ever-present Keanu Reeves as Johnny Silverhand and the fantastic Phantom Liberty content, and you have a robust package that has earned your time and attention. So go out and play. 
just don't get played. Resident Evil 4 Remake. Ah, I forgot about that. Uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake. I'm still trying to get it. Yeah. So, how do you follow up one of the greatest survival horror games ever made, especially as a remake? Well, Resident Evil 4 Remake did just that. The 2005 original is still lauded to this day, and it's just as playable as it was all those years ago. Instead of just throwing a new coat of paint on the game yet again and calling it a day, Capcom truly went above and beyond to tell Leon Kennedy's horrific, nightmare story in dramatic and awe-inspiring fashion. Side by side, both the original and the 2023 remake follow most of the same story beats, but there are plenty of surprises and new additions thrown in to make this game feel brand new. You can stop right there, Ada. Gameplay-wise, the RE4 remake knocked it out of the park, offering intense and brutal third-person action combat alongside more robust and rewarding exploration. From the weighty, hefty feel to combat, to the terrifying art direction, to the memorable characters and villains, heck, to the weapon upgrades, there's just so much to this remake that consistently impresses. Now that he has chosen death... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Stellar Blade. Ah, oh, Stellar Blade. I did play on a demo. Need to go check out my part gameplay. character action game, part Souls-like. Stellar Blade, if you'll time. excuse the obvious, is, well, stellar. It's one of those games that aims to sink Oops. its hooks into you it's right from the get-go without ever letting go. Now, most of this comes down to the game's over-the-top kinetic action combat, but it also comes from the narrative. Earth has been ravaged and humans are being eradicated, so it's up to Eve and her pals to take back what is rightfully theirs, while ensuring the remaining uh, populace and cities don't, don't fall ruin, or at least more so. <laughs> Characters just pop off the screen. The apocalyptic world is haunting yet beautiful. The combat is tough, visceral, and frenetic, but always fair. And the game's action tendencies ensure there's always something to look forward to while playing. Simply put, we need more single-player focused games like this one, so it's truly delightful to see Stellar Blade gaining traction and praise. Her mission is to save the planet by defeating the Elder Nativa. All we must do is complete the mission. Death Stranding Director's Cut. Death Stranding. I'm on the beach, Sam. About that. Our beach. The one where I was born. Come and find me. If you want to discuss games that are polarizing, then, well, look no further than Death Stranding. This should likely come as no real surprise, given that it's brought to us by Hideo Kojima. There's really no getting past just how out there Death Stranding really is. Some have called it a walking simulator, others have called it an action adventure, and still others have called it a survival horror game of sorts, given the narrative's dark tone in many areas. Heck, you could even call it a Norman Reedus simulator. To an extent, it's actually all of these things and then some. It's a game about connections, both physical and relational. You see, the United States fell to a widespread calamity, and it's up to Sam Porter Bridges to repair and reconnect, along with those he meets. The game has you spend countless hours simply walking, exploring, traversing, and carrying your goods from point A to point B, and, well, you know, sometimes to point Z. Sure, there's some combat and some scares from time to time, but really, this is a game about connecting others by any means necessary in order to rebuild all while hideous, monstrous beings hope for your downfall. Coors Banquet, the same I mean... brewing tradition since 1873. Start your legacy. Did I ever I mean, tell you my real name? I wanted to. Oh, very... The Last of Us Part 1. Ah, first. Over there! Why are they doing that? Keep looking at me, baby. We're gonna get out of this. I promise. The Last of Us Part 1, yes, the remade version of the original 2013 PS3 game, is pure gaming excellence from both the perspective of gameplay and narrative. For the uninitiated, The Last of Us tells the harrowing and somber story of Joel and Ellie as they work their way through a ravaged, post-apocalyptic America. Contending with the infamous clickers, monstrosities corrupted by the cordyceps fungus and their counterparts, means you are in for strong elements of survival horror, crafting, tense battles, stealth, exploration, plus so much more. You picked a hell of a place to hold up, didn't you? You know, as bad as those things are, at least they're predictable. The normal people that scare me. Ghosts of Tsushima. 
Now, I know there's a big difference between The Last of Us Part 1 and The Last of Us uh, Part 2, the remastered ones. Now, I know a lot of people want to play The Last of Us Part 1 because, you know, that's one of the best ones so far, and of course, George in it too. But, the only problem was that I know a lot of people that hate The Last of Us 2, you know, Last of Us Part 2, because I know that it was too risk, you know, too early, you know, what happened to uh, Joel's death was triggering everybody. And they hate on one of the worst characters that you, they now you can officially play on was... What's it? What's her name? Hold on. That big, swollen, <clears throat> wannabe Brock Lester. And I think, I think it was, uh, what is it? I think it was, what's her name? Abby, yeah, Abby, because, um, yeah, Abby was, was definitely the worst characters, and I understand how most people that hate on the characters, but not the voice actress that, you know, apparently they, you know, see has been on many threats, because... I guess you could say that uh, it was like a real life characters of Jules and Elliot, of course, and but you know Abby was it's like a threat to them, and I just don't understand why they like like take it very seriously. But you know, I, I even though I still rather right play the Last of Us Part One, I might have to try out Part Two. And I know there's a lot of people that are going to be very triggered about it. Because I understand how a lot of people that hate on it. They hate on The, the Last of Us Part 2 of it. And I understand and I understand how it. But don't take it Don't take it on one of the voice actresses who actually done one of the characters. You can take on the characters that actually did that. No one, no one else forced one of the forced actors and actress that did that. If someone kills the mainly character that you ever love, and just happens, so yeah. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima, I had totally forgot about it. I'm gonna try to play it. Well, I'm gonna try it by anyway. So yeah. I totally forgot about that. While open world games might seem a dime a dozen nowadays, Ghost of Tsushima came along to completely refresh what it means to explore a gaming playground. Players stepped into the role of Jin Sakai as he adventures across the expansive island of Tsushima. Instead of just pointing you where to go next, the game utilizes a wind mechanic that gently nudges you in the right direction. But let's be honest, most of us were too enraptured from exploring off the beaten path, taking out enemies via the intense combat made up of various stances and sword maneuvers. The role of a samurai taking on the Mongols in a lush I'm Japanese setting isn't an easy task. So it's fortunate that this game keeps you immersed around every sun-soaked corner with stellar gameplay loops and progression. Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon, I forgot about that. Well, it doesn't look like there's an easy way out of here. The follow-up to the beloved Zero Dawn, Forbidden West sees protagonist Aloy venture across a post-apocalyptic western United States where nature has reclaimed its territory. The star of the show here, apart from the fantastic locations, is, of course, the evolution of the machine animals that Aloy encounters during her journey across the lands. Playing this game on PS5 is a real visual and auditory treat, 
One where you will stop plenty of times to take in the gorgeous yet ravaged vistas, perhaps even taking a screenshot or two. Plus Forbidden West ups the gameplay ante with enhanced combat and traversal, amongst the other enjoyable action RPG elements. Gran Turismo 7. I forgot about that. I think my brother asked it. It's pretty Whoa. darn remarkable yeah. to think that the Pinnacle Racing Sim series has been going strong since its inception way back in 1997 on the PlayStation 1. Fortunately, fans of this long running racing series can once again get their gearhead fix with Gran Turismo 7. While the game was understandably met with some division due to some progression and monetization issues, developer Polyphony Digital still managed to create a pure sim experience for those up to the challenge. Gran Turismo 7 features a robust suite of gameplay modes, including the fan favorite GT Simulation Mode. From a host of real-world vehicles and locales, racing sim players have so much to enjoy with this game. Plus, it can now be played in VR with PSVR 2 for added immersion. Ooh. God of War Ragnarok. Speaking of that one, man. While the long-winded Atreus section in Ragnarok might not be everyone's cup of tea, there's no doubt about it that the latest uh, installment in Kratos' more mature I journey is downright stunning. The visceral Leviathan axe and Blades of Chaos combat returns and feels better than ever. There's just this perfect weightiness and punch to pummeling foes in this game that really can't be matched in the action-adventure genre. Once again, players adventure with Kratos and Atreus, this time on the eve of Fimblewinter. The amount of care and craft that went into each facet of this game is palpable. Whether you are exploring Sindri's charmingly ethereal treehouse or the epic grand scale of Vanaheim. Rated mature. Astro's Playroom. I'm not gonna lie, I actually enjoyed it. Um, uh, the God of War Ragnarok. And the only reason why, because, um, I know I was a big fan of God of War, because ever since I actually played God of War 2 and 3, I forgot to play the fourth one. And, of course, the, and of course I played along with the God of War Ragnarok instead. It just helped me so far that, you know, I had so much great experience of it. And, um, even though I actually did play it, um, since I got it, uh, from Christmas, of course, and it's the only thing I ever, I, that I ever played it ever since then. And now that I forgot that, um, yeah, they added some free DLC that I totally forgot about it. I'll probably have to get back and play it uh, soon. But I'll have to wait till November once again. Because, let's say, it's, uh, it makes sense to part of the whole winter thing, if you ask me. So, yeah. Ooh, Astro Player Rooms. Oh! Ah. For pure oh. distilled 3D platforming goodness on the PS5, look no further than Astro's Playroom. The pack-in game experience that perfectly encapsulates the DualSense's capabilities and the console's raw power and fidelity. The sheer playfulness and whimsy, as well as the love letter to all things PlayStation of Astro's Playroom wow. is unmatched on the system. If for some reason you missed out on this experience, well, first off, what are you even doing? Second, you need to remedy that right now. Taking place across a charming, colorful, and eclectic mix of worlds and stages, Astro seamlessly jumps, bounds, and glides across the world, oftentimes hopping into a mech of sorts to swap up the gameplay on the fly. I think the I have feel it right from the now. DualSense as Astro moves about each surface is utter amazement in gaming form. 
Yeah, I think I have. I'm gonna try to get it. Returnal. Returnal? Oh, I forgot about that. If you want to see a game that showcases why the PS5 is such a powerful console, then look no further than Returnal. Sci-fi psychological horror meets third-person shooter meets roguelike in this masterclass of a game. The sheer freneticism as protagonist Selene ventures forth into the darkness with the repeating cycle makes for a gameplay experience unlike anything else. However, be ready for a steady and mounting challenge. The alien landscape that has been crafted for Returnal feels and looks like the thing of nightmares. As Selene, you will blast away horrific monsters with a wide selection of weaponry and upgrades. Seeing the neon-drenched glow of enemy attacks as you dodge and weave through the zones is truly incredible to behold. Demon's Souls Demon's Souls, never heard of it. Remaster and remake development house Bluepoint Games set the bar really high with the Demon's Souls release on PS5 as a pinnacle launch title. Excelling in every conceivable area from the original PS3 game, Demon's Souls on PS5 offers soul That's fans everything they like could hope for and then Souls, right? The sheer artistry on display when playing through this game is mesmerizing and intoxicating in equal measures. Yes, the brutal challenge and steep difficulty is there around every gothic macabre corner, but pushing through each new area rewards you with a stunning vista, new gear and loot, or a hard-as-nails boss to gawk at. And if you're up for it, it doesn't get much better than this. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. The Ratchet and Clank series has been going strong through every generation and evolution of PlayStation. Rift Apart is the culmination of the developer's work, as this title offers up adrenaline-pumping gameplay, dazzling set-piece moments, a quirky and epic story, plus so much more. The first time you see the raw power of the PS5 being used during the Rift tethering sections is simply amazing. And it's not just a gimmick, since it's woven into the very fabric of the narrative. The series' kinetic gunplay, melee combat, and traversal options are better than ever here, and it's always a blast to see and try out the creative weapons on offer as you work to level each of them up. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Mojo Plays. And ah, I'm not gonna lie. I would love to play Ratchet and Clank with the part that I totally forgot. And even though it looks super fun, I have to like play through a lot of classic games instead. And even though I wouldn't have to play it, so yeah. But um, these are these are very amazing. Some of these I never played. Some of the others that I, that I did play was God of War Ragnarok and of course Spider Man Two as well. I haven't played uh, Final Fantasy VII, uh, Boulder Gates 3, Hogwarts Legacy, Elder Rings, Hell Diver, Alan Wake 2. I forgot about Cyberpunk 2027, Resident Evil 4 Remake, uh, Stellar Blaze. I'm going to try to get it. Um, I want to get back to play The Last of Us Part 1 that I totally have. I forgot to I forgot to get the, the Ghost of Tusi. Tusima, a uh, Horizon, Grand Tour. I I forgot I did have this the playrooms, and also Ratchet and Clank ripped apart, and yeah, and you know that's the only thing I like about it because um, it does actually helps me you know collect a lot of PlayStation games along with the others. For the Xbox Series X and the Nintendo Switch, that is, that is very most important, and I need y'all support. I need your help. So, yeah. But uh, let me know comment down below, man. What is your favorite PS5 games? It could be a lot of them, and um, yeah. 
And even though I would love to get back to play, get back to play on PS5, I need to get the PlayStation Plus uh, Premium. It's very most important to me as as I can because of it. So, yeah. But um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah. Let me know. Comment down below. I'll probably gonna do more of these next time if I can. So yeah. But um, but yeah, man. Comment down below. I'll see y'all in the next trash video.